They came from faraway places To march on a freedom trail They sang a new revolution From the songs their fathers made Hello, this is Mike Hanrahan again, and it's 1921. I'm so delighted to be uh, once again part of, of the Clare County Library, a decade of the centenary celebration, and uh, particularly part of their History Week, which I've been involved in for the last few years. It's a great honour for me to be involved. It has been an incredible journey for me. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be taking on the Civil War uh, somehow, because it's it just seems... The last couple of years of the of the War of Independence have been quite brutal, particularly the, this period um, from towards the end of 20 to, to the middle of 21 was quite vicious and it was very tough reading some of the stories and the accounts and, and, and thankfully we have all these amazing uh, historians in County Clare who have written some incredible books, they're all here behind me. I, I I just I eat them up. I loved I loved the, the the research. But I'm not a historian. I I came to this as a songwriter. I came to this as a guy who was taken in by the the beauty of the creative people uh, who lived over a hundred years ago and began a cultural revolution or a cultural revival, whatever people want to call it. And that's what attracted me. It attracted me into the songs. It's interesting that there are very few books written in or history about County Clare uh, up to recent times. But uh, there was a lot of songs. We recorded everything in song, and I'm so delighted that I found a lot of songs, thanks to the Clare Library in a lot of instances. But I met people, and people were sending me songs, and then through my own research of finding songbooks, and I discovered a treasure of amazing songs and stories. It is really interesting that uh, in the early stages of, of, of the, the war, prior to the war in 1917, when Davis by-election was held in, in East Clare, that the, the lyric in the song is quite naive and kind of simple in the sense that it's it's almost like putting one upmanship on, on, on the British and the RIC and the language of the song changes dramatically over the years then. I did find some really great songs about the election um, a few years ago. Um, I haven't recorded them, so I think I might just give you a little a blast of them. It was the De Valera song was, was one. Um, oh, men of the Banner County, now closely watch today and vote for your ancestors in an independent way. The seats between two contests, their names you all did hear. One is a castle servant and the other is De Valera. Hold up your heads, strong parents. Pay heed to what I say. But for this noble heroes, your sons would be forced away to fight the gallant German with no power on earth to fear. So go out and choose a next and be sure to vote for your man, De Valier. Something like that, anyway. There was another one that I came across. Um, and I always noticed that, that a lot of these songs had no um, melodies at all, written for them especially. They tended to take the melodies of the day so I found uh, tunes like the mountains of morn uh, and I found them attached to several songs which was a beautiful layer and anyway, here's one of them well the election is over I hope you agree for the right man is in we sent home the KC for now we can be singing and dancing our jig and we'll tell Paddy Lynch to go home for his wig I was addressing a crowd down at Mick Carmody's hotel. I won't say who they were, for you know them too well. Those seeps with their bottles and kids without shoes. And a few drunken men whistling mad through their flutes. Then up comes poor Lawler and unto them said, I've been beaten today and I have a sore head. The blackguards of Scarif, tis we'll put them down. For if Lynch is elected, we'll smash up the town. The seat in Kilkenny, you know it's all full. For that is another great blow to John Bull. And all the Irish party are dying out one by one. Of shock and heart failure, they're all nearly gone. The sight of that number, whilst they were alive, 2,975, has put them to sleep so that they might forget the East Clare election 
has them there asleep, yes. The following year, they would have had a, a landslide victory all over the country in, in, the, in the 1918 election. Uh, they won most of the seats. They were helped greatly by the women, the Common Amman and all other women's organisations. Because um, most historians would believe now that without that support of the women, they wouldn't have got the votes that they got. The women got people out to vote. So the women were very much part of, the, of that election, as was the Labour movement, because the Labour Party stood back and allowed uh, Sinn Féin to go for the 1918 election as well. One of my favourite writers was Brian O'Higgins. Uh, he was a prolific writer, um, incredible in fact. He could write really vicious lyrics in, in one song that would describe an incident uh, quite clearly and dramatically. And then he'd write this most beautiful love song. Or then he'd write his tongue and cheek songs. I came across so many of them. The, the man from, from the Daily Mail was one of them where the Daily Mail guys reporting back to, to his London boss from County Clare saying that there will be a There'd be another rising, uh, said the man from, from the Daily Mail. It was a very funny song. And then John Bull Guida was a song I discovered and I've sung it a few times at, at the, 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 the History Weeks. It's a really great tongue in cheek song. But he wrote this amazing, beautiful ballad called The Young Volunteer. And, and I've been singing this for quite a few years. I found it in an old songbook I had. Uh, I think it might have been given to me by Ronnie Drew many years ago. I had some classic songs, but this one was The Young Volunteer. It really says it all. And Higgins has a huge Clare connection because he was elected in 1918 at the election in West Clare. And in fact, he stayed down there. He opened an Irish college in Carrigahort. He had huge uh, association with County Clare. So it's proper for that on this, the, the final of my, my, um, my presentations that I honour him in some way. And the best way to honour him is to me, one of the most beautiful love songs of any revolution, The Young Volunteer. The hour has come to strike a blow for freedom and the right Gladly do I go to meet the coming fight in life or death, in joy or in dread. No power can part us two. Under God, my thoughts. Yes, my thoughts, they shall be of Aaron and of you. And the blackbird's song, it will fill the grove, and the thrush, she will pipe. Once again, all the golden dreams she wove, they will haunt that lonely glen. Our dreams of love, our dreams of joy, our dreams of peace, oh, a store they may ne'er come true. They shall never, never cease for Aaron. Cause I've given my hopes, I've given 
given my love, I've given my life to him, to her. This year I'd like to sing songs that I've written, inspired by some of the characters I met, and most particularly Paddle Clancy, who I've, I've really read a lot about and uh, I greatly admire his courage. And then of course, the courage of the women I discovered. Uh, everywhere I go now I read books about the women of the revolution and they've inspired me to write a song as well so that we remember them. So I hope you enjoy these songs because this is my response as a writer to the writers I read about all those years ago. This next song was inspired by the story of Paddle Clancy. I've read quite a lot about him. I never knew about him at all until I was uh, studying 1916 uh, with Brendan Begley and I came across all these names that we'd never heard of. But he was a, a draper by, by trade. He trained in Kildasert. He was originally from Cranny, he was born in Cranny. Uh, trained in Kildasso, then moved down to Newcastle West and then to uh, Yall. Eventually ended up in Dublin in 1912, around that time. And he signed up immediately as soon as the volunteer movement began. He was a dedicated man for the, yeah, speaking Irish and promoting the Irish language. He soon made his way right into the heart of the volunteer movement. He fought with Dick McKee at uh, the forecourts and the forecourts saw so much of, of the, the, the battle uh, there are amazing stories of, of the bravery that went on in the foreign courts uh, during 1916. He was sentenced to death and that was commuted and he came home and uh, got right involved in the volunteer movement and eventually was right at the centre of, of Collins' um, kind of secret little army. He was right at the, at the top table. He was arrested in 1920 and he was murdered uh, viciously in Dublin Castle. Uh, with Dick McKee and a young man from Quinn called Connor Clune, who was a kind of an innocent bystander. He was in Dublin uh, working with the Irish language and he was just caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time and he too received a really brutal death. Clancy's death caused um, Collins no end of grief. He knew he'd, he'd lost one of his, his closest and, and greatest uh, um, warriors, I suppose, and when I was writing the song, I, I saw his name and, and I translated it from the Irish and it came into, um, I translated it into the Irish and it, it came up as uh, Son of the Ruddy Warrior in the ancient language. And I thought Ruddy wasn't really that poetic, so I changed it to Crimson. I took, a, I took my liberties as a writer and changed it to Crimson. And this is the Crimson Warrior. And it's dedicated to Paddock Clancy and in fact dedicated to all the volunteers. Uh, they, they had an amazing story.
I wrote a, a theatre show with Brenda Begley for 1916 commemorations. It was called uh, Dublin Burning. And I got the title from a book I'd read uh, about Dublin and the week in Dublin. Pretty harrowing accounts of the, of the entire week of what went on. And I rang Brenda and said, let's, let's do a show. So in the middle of it, I decided to write a song. It was originally a narrative right through the play, uh, Dublin Burning. And that was really inspired by what my initial uh, reactions to this amazing story that was unfolding in my history lessons, because I have to say my school history uh, is nothing at all to what I've learned in the last eight or nine years. And I've questioned that on, on, on a number of fronts. Um, I'm glad I've, I've discovered uh, identities of people involved. I was drawn to by a guy called Michael O'Hanrahan, who was one of the people who were executed in, in May of 1916. And no relation, but it was just the name that drew me into that story and I got delved further into it and, and read lots of books about 1916. So this song, Double and Burning, I think I'm going to sing a few because it was inspired by so many of these amazing characters. I hope you like it. They came from faraway places To march on a freedom trail They sang a new revolution From the songs their fathers made On a street all bright with the sunshine In a city on Easter parade They came to reclaim a nation From centuries and chains It's high to shun the Charlie's cry. Oh, 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 Dublin burning. Many men, women, and children lay cold on the city clay. For what died the sons and the daughters of Aaron? Are the soldiers who passed their way oh, Dublin burning At the Mendicity Stephen's Green City Hall South of the Union Maribone Lane Sackville, Mount Street Bridge, North King Street, oh, Dublin Burning, oh, Dublin Burning, in the dark, dark cell. The military jail, soldiers kneel to pray. They fought their revolution and they died the martyr's way. Patrick Pierce, Tomas McDonough, Willie Pierce, Thomas Clark, Sean McDermott. John McBride, Joe Plunkett, Ned Daly, Jack Houston, Eamon Kent, Thomas Kent, James Connolly, Michael Mellon, Con Colbert,
Eva Gore Booth has been a huge influence on me in recent years. I, I found her through the poetry of Alice Milligan, actually, because I started reading Alice Milligan, uh, the revolutionary poet. And then I got into more poetry and one led to the next, and then I discovered this amazing woman called Eva Gore Booth. Then I started reading her life. And she was sister of Constance Markovich, uh, born a very privileged upbringing in, in Sligo, friend of hers, Esther Roper, they became lifelong partners and they fought for the right of women to choose. And it's incredible when you think back a few years ago, we had the referendum for equality and Eva Gore Booth was fighting this fight 100 years ago. She had an underground magazine called Urania and she wrote beautiful, beautiful poetry. Um, this song, The Craggy Hill, is dedicated to her and all the women of the revolution because it seemed to me that the women were left on the side. So I had this image of a craggy hill and we just cast them up to the craggy hill and we basically forgot about their courage and their involvement and their support because they were there right through every stage of the, the revolution. They were part of it and driving it. So it's nice that in recent years we're beginning to read their stories, powerful testimonies, uh, some horrific stories about the treatment doled out to them by both sides. Mm -hmm. So this song is dedicated to all the women of the revolution. On a craggy hill, a long ago winter's morning Watch the sun hanging with the moon. We thought this bloody war would soon be over. One day soon, you said, one day soon. But for you and me, this war never ended. We fought side by side and soon we turned the gun. In this bitter, twisted world of our envy Is the battle ever won? I often think about you in the springtime On the summer breeze when I hear the cuckoo shrill But when autumn falls around me like a thunder Think of you on Craggy Hill. I left you there somewhere on the hillside where the hazel and the wildflower bloom. Ever since that day we parted. Almost eight years ago, I started out on a journey looking for the songs and the songwriters of the great cultural revolution and I found them, I found so many of them. Uh, in recent years, I, I studied the songs and songwriters of County Clare and I found an amazing treasure. 
So I'm thankful for, to all the writers who, who wrote our history. Um, the events that I, I, I discovered has been a huge influence to me as a, as a, as a writer. I, they have inspired me to write a few songs and I sincerely hope you enjoyed my presentation today. I'm grateful to our historians, uh, to Moss McCumbera, uh, Padre Mogo Rourke. I, I just have read your stuff and it's a, it's a, it's a treasure to have you searching and digging into the history of County Clare and giving it to us. I am particularly delighted to be sharing the stage with Joe Murray my pal Joe, and Joe Power from my dad's parish. And Sinead McCool, your book on the women has been an inspiration. And Mary McAuliffe, I've watched Mary on so many shows on TV. I've watched podcasts from various places around the world that she's been involved in, and she's shining a light on the women of the revolution. That has been a revelation for me. A lot of things we never knew, we're now beginning to know, and it's it's right and proper. So I look forward to reading the rest of the history. I look forward to see how this state unfolded over the next few years. But for now, it's been my pleasure. Thank you, the Clare County Council, as always. It's been a great uh, journey for me, and I hope you all enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye-bye.